Hey everyone, and welcome back. On this episode, we're going to be painting up a miniature bust. Now, traditionally, I'm not really a bust type of painter. I do mostly 28mm to 35mm scale models for things like Warhammer and Dungeons and & Dragons and various board games. I don't really venture out too far uh, outside that realm other than the occasional massive monster or creature that I'm painting, but busts are an area that were relatively new to me. One of the reasons being is that busts tend to be very expensive. If you ever look online and look at some of the busts that are sculpted out there out of resin, you'll find them widely around the range of about 40 to 80 US dollars. That's a very expensive range. I mean, that's almost as expensive as Games Workshop models. Not quite, but almost. Now, you spend a lot of money on this bust, you're really going to be concerned about messing it up, unless you're just a really amazing painter out there. There's that terror, at least I have that terror, that I'm going to really butcher this model and have wasted my money and walked away with very few lessons. Now, recently I purchased a 3D printer, a resin printer, an Elegoo Mars, and I started a couple months ago just printing up pretty much everything I could find out there because it's relatively cheap to print up miniatures, but even more so, it's relatively cheap to print up 3D busts that you can find out there. There are tons and tons of folks out there that do Patreons that, you know, for $10 a month you can download, you know, 10 plus busts or miniatures from them, and it's a really great deal. Um, there's also free sites out there, things like Thingiverse, where you can also find busts and miniatures, and you can print them out on the cheap. The model that I'm painting today is this one right here. Now this is, I believe it was actually just called Female Bust, and I downloaded this, and this was my very first bust that I printed up a couple of months ago. There were some learning curves and challenges there, um, how to support the models, how to get them to print without any kind of defects. There are a few defects on this model, primarily because I didn't know about things like making the model, model hollow so that it consumes less resin, therefore is cheaper, but also will typically print better because there's less surface area to, to uh, cause layer lines and things like that. I also printed it at a higher layer line, meaning there is the, the detail isn't as sharp as I could have gotten it. That said, it's still a, an absolutely gorgeous uh, model, a gorgeous 3D bust to work with, and I didn't want to throw it out because it's, I mean, it's, it's immaculate. It still looks great, and it cost me under $2 to print this as a whole chunk of resin. So I'm really excited um, to be able to print these busts up. Something that's great about it is you can print as many of these as you want, and don't worry about messing it up. You can try all kinds of things. You can, you can do different skin tones, work on your non-metallic metals. It's a really great opportunity for you to improve various skills because it now is a very, very low cost, assuming you have you know, a 3D printer that's under $300 and a bottle of resin. That said, this print, uh, when I went to look up who created this print so I could give them adequate credit, it turns out it is by a pretty popular sculptor out there, uh, Duncan Shadow Luca. Please check him out. He's on Patreon. I'll have a link in the description down below for you to check out his work. This one is actually a free one that you can find on Thingiverse, and I'll have this down in the description below for the STL file. Um, a couple of positives on painting busts. One, they're a large surface area, so you have plenty of landscape to work on your, you know, your skin tones. Um, and for example, on this one, I did a lot of airbrushing, and that's primarily what you're going to see today. But you're going to get, you know, a lot of detail on these models, and it's just fantastic for you to work on various skills that then you can bring over to your Warhammer games, your D&D minis, whatever it might be. These are great for practicing on and really showing you depth of character. The negatives. Busts have a lot of surface area, so all of those details that you can work on and improve your skills, unfortunately, it's going to show all of your flaws, whether that's heavy brush strokes, um, any kind of dr dried peeling paint elements, bad non-metallic metal, it really showcases it all. Things that are typically easier to hide on smaller minis will now be expanded, they're on a bigger scale, so they're more obvious to the eye. That has its negatives and its positives, of course. It's just another challenge for you to overcome so that you can hone your skills. A couple other models, you know, that are out there, for example, this is a paid model. Um, this one is from Artisan Guild that I painted up just recently. Um, I'll show up a picture here uh, near the end of this bust, but this one I painted previously as actually a test bust to prepare to paint this one. So this is technically the first bust I ever painted, and this would be the second one after I felt a little bit more confident um, 
being able to do this on video. So uh, stick with us after the break and we'll jump in and uh, we'll get her all painted up. I've already gone ahead and primed this bust black. We're not gonna do zenithal highlighting because the way we're airbrushing, it's already gonna have that effect. Because this is 3D printed already attached to a plinth, I'm going to wrap it in some frog tape and then seal it off with a little additional Vallejo masking. That way we can keep the plinth nice and crisp black as we primed it so we can freely work on the airbrushing. The model itself I'm doing in a relatively pallid flesh tone, and this is one of my favorite little recipes to use. This is a sunset purple by scale color as the shadows, a pale flesh by game color, and then a light flesh for the highlight with model color. Starting off, the first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to begin blocking with our airbrush uh, using the sunset purple through scale color, and we're going to hit all of the deepest recesses so that we get a nice deep rich shadow color transition from black to purple. The next step is having a very watered down pale flesh from game color. This is going to be our base coat. Now the base coat and the highlight in this case are very close together, but there is a slightly more pinkish hue to the pale flesh and it just goes on top of the sunset purple beautifully and the transition is very smooth as you can see. You can already see those, those shadows standing out nicely and bringing it up to its first layer of highlight using the base. Something to mention here again, because these are 3D printed busts, you don't have to worry too much about messing this up. You can just kind of go at it, and if you didn't thin your airbrush paint down enough, you're gonna get a little spatter, but then go add a little thinner to it, and then go over those layers again, and you'll start to see it smooth out nicely. For the hair, we're gonna jump in. I wanted to do a black to transition to green and bright white. So I'm using, um, these are again, scale color, fantasy game. This is green jade that we're putting down right here just to get things started. Because of the overspray from the airbrush that I'm using, I'm actually leveraging that overspray of that light color to put a light layer of jade on. It's gonna go on very, very bright around the edges of the hair that you can see here. The downside of course is that I am also overspraying the green onto some of the flesh that we just worked on, but hang tight, we're actually gonna leverage that green overspray here shortly. As you can see here, I left a lot of the hair blocked in black, and that's intentional. I'm going around the edges and I'm creating a layer where the light would hit across the hair with that dark jade green color, and that's gonna be my, my base or my shadow transition to the black under layer uh, to really bring out those highlights. And we can't forget to do this little hair strip on the side. I almost actually forgot to do that entirely. We want to make sure we hit that in green too. I should also mention that I'm using a Badger Sotar 2020. It is not a crazy expensive brush. It's under $150. I'm using a very fine needle on it, and that is helping me keep my spray relatively controlled as we go through this model. As you can see here, I'm starting to bring up that color, going over those highlighted areas in green again, this time using scale color Orc Flesh from Fantasy and Game series. And I'm gonna continuously bring up the highlight. You can already start to see there looks like the hair is starting to shimmer already. As I transition, I'm gonna use uh, Gauze Blaster Green from Games Workshop, and then I'm gonna use Verdigris uh, from Game Color. And that's gonna be mixed with just a touch of white to make that very sharp highlight at the very end. And as you can see, I'm hitting all of the spots where in my mind I think the hair would reflect and almost like non-metallic metal, you want to know where that shimmer and hair is gonna go. If you've ever seen any of those L'Oreal or you know, easy be breezy beautiful cover girl type of commercials where they kind of flick their hair and you see that long string of white reflection off of their hair. That's kind of the effect we're trying to go for here. So, you know, look up a couple of examples online to see how light hits hair that's shiny and you'll get a similar look to what we're going for here. Now, when we were doing the hair, 
we oversprayed a little bit onto the highlighted flesh around the edges, a little bit in the green colors we were using. And that's okay, we're actually gonna leverage that now to paint on our purples and rebring our shadows. And this is actually gonna work out very nicely because the purple on top of the green creates almost a purplish blue color and the purple on top of the highlighted flesh makes the purple a little bit brighter. So you get a much starker contrast between that bright color and the darker color of the edges, the shadows, the hair, and it just looks really, really nice. Now, I'm not gonna go as wild as you see me going here where there's just purple everywhere and it's really extreme. It does look really cool. It kind of gives it this 80s look to it, um, but I'm gonna come back here in a minute and we're gonna transition again using our light flesh to highlight and kind of blend in a little bit smoother the colors between the purple and the uh, pale flesh. Something to also add here, um, I won't really be showing it, but I'm gonna be doing some final touch-ups on the model off camera, which are basically adding the non-metallic metal, uh, her piercing in her lip, her ear, uh, a couple of small white dots on her eyes that we're gonna do to show the reflection, and a little bit of minor just glazing on some purple, uh, purple and then the light flesh, just to blend them more smoothly together because airbrushes typically will have a little bit of spray effect and we wanna smoothen those out as best we can in the edges. We're gonna go again and hit it with some light flesh. This is just gonna bring up the highlights in the most important areas. I'm talking the tops of the shoulders, those back muscles, all the tops of those, those muscles. You wanna be able to kinda of angle it so the light hits them perfectly. The top of her nose, her forehead, um, the top of her chest. There's some muscle and lines in her neck that you wanna make sure you lightly get those highlighted up a little bit too. And again, by having extreme highlights and darker darks, you're making a much brighter contrast, which makes for a more appealing model and draws a lot more attention to those fine details. Now that we're switching to a brush, I wanted her eyes to have kind of a zombie look to them, so I'm painting them in a pure black, and we're gonna add a couple of little white dots to add that reflection look to her eyes, and then I'm gonna go over it with a gloss varnish when I'm all done, and it will have a nice reflective surface. Her eyebrows, we're gonna do just like her hair. I want them to have a base of black. Then we're gonna use that jade green and we're gonna bring it up with the orc flesh color, again with the gauze blaster green and then the verdigris with a touch of white at the tips that we're gonna stipple in to be our highlights on top of her eyebrows. I'm taking a little bit of my deep purple and I'm really thinning it out quite a bit to pretty much a glaze. And what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a little underneath, I guess you'd be eyeshadow that I'm putting on her. So I want it to be a nice dark purple in the corners of her eyes and to transition out smoothly to the light flesh highlight. And it's just putting on a couple of light layers and then feathering it out to give you some nice darker contrast between her green eyelashes, her black eyes, and her light flesh highlighted skin. Because we don't wanna overwhelm the model with too many colors, I wanna do her lips in the same fashion that we did her eyebrows and her hair really quickly, going back from all the way black all the way up to the vertigree with a touch of white. Some of the final details that I'm gonna add in here, I'm gonna take the vertigree green, mix with a little bit of white, and go around the tips and the highlights of the hair, bringing up the white to the brightest possible white I can get it. And then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of black, really thin down, so I add that stark contrast in the dark areas of the hair to really make that shimmer effect stand out. I'll go around and do the non-metallic metal on her lip piercing, her earring, and then just minor touch-ups wherever they might need to be done. But overall, this model is pretty much done. I'm extremely happy with how the final product came out. And considering it's only my second bust I ever painted, the first being the one I tested on the other day, I couldn't be happier with the final results. 
Now, the cost of entry, like I said, is really your biggest barrier to being able to 3D print all these busts and miniatures that you want. And the airbrush that I'm using is really only a mid-range brush. I mean, it's uh, under 150 bucks. I think I saw it the other day for 110 on Amazon. It's a, again, it's a Badger Sodar 2020. But combining the ability to print cheap busts and miniatures and access to uh, a, a relatively affordable airbrush, you have all the tools that you could possibly want to just freely practice all of your skills with an airbrush, with a regular brush, on high detailed affordable models to improve your overall skills and end up with results that you're happy with. And there you have it. An easy bus painted up, primarily with an airbrush, followed up with a little bit of light glazing and detail work. But it really is a really awesome experience to be able to print these things out and paint them and not have to worry about wasting my money or um, damaging what is essentially a gorgeous model to work on. So I'm really excited to have had the opportunity to paint this up, to show you guys kind of how I do it, especially um, working on flesh tones and things like that through an airbrush. I hope you found this video uh, useful to some degree to show you that um, it's really not that intimidating or, or hard to just kind of jump in and start painting these models. You're biggest element is probably going to be the cost of entry. Um, once you do that, you could just kind of grab your airbrush, grab your brushes, whatever it might be, jump in, start painting, and have a little fun with it. I'm definitely going to be painting up more of this particular model. Um, I'm going to, you know, fix up all of the little blemishes and things that I did as my first bust I ever printed. Uh, I'm going to correct that so I can do more justice to this particular model on the next time I paint it. Uh, I want to thank you guys again so much for checking out my video. It means the world to me. It really does. Uh, please, by all means, check out some of my other videos that I have. I'll have links to them somewhere around here. Um, but please check them out. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And hopefully we'll see you back at the next video. Thanks all.